Hello and welcome back to ab abduction. Abduction. I will never say that properly. And I know it because OBS always shows me what tries to transcribe whatever I'm saying into uh, subtitles. Oh, I did not notice it earlier. So look. Okay. Doesn't seem that there was any change within the tree. Well, I'm sure we pour some water into that tree. I hope we do. And what the hell is that thing on the roof? Okay, so it's uh, six, three, four, one. Where the hell is the the vault? Because I was sure that where the sizzle is in, that it, that was the vault. Now I'm not sure. See it in the map. Still, I'll check every nook and cranny. Because my short memory is indeed a short memory. Cecil! Cecil. We ain't making for the progress till you disable that red mofang beam. Where's the gonna have to get through the wall of this cell? You could at least be as useful as to tell me where this stuff is. I'm new here, remember? map to what's working and what's not. I w and we haven't ex fully explored this place yet. Um, oh, right, the fault is not in here. Okay. Interesting, it's open. Is that the tower you that was mentioned? Why are those what is it powering? Because those power lines go off into the sky and they end. As far as I understand, okay, we are on the alien planet, but uh, even alien planets oh, need to have some physics. 
Hello. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's see W sizzles here. So we went through the wall, uh, through the bosk rail yard, and we are inside the wall, I guess. No. Welcome. We are in the house. Oh, sorry. Will it work on something else or? It wasn't proper position, I guess. It was just... I'm able to move it just to mess with my... I'm even more confused now. Oh my goodness. I shall document the curious events that have uh, trans transpired with myself, my family, friends and co-workers. Uh, Wartnell was a peaceful mining town founded by my grandfather and nestled within the red rock of the desert in the Arizona Territory. Uh, its 163 inhabitants heard a mighty explosion on the night of June 27, 1903. I sent several workers through the town to verify that the explosion had not caused any injuries or damage to mining equipment. They returned and reported that it must have been a loud clap of thunder caused by dry lightning, for they found no damage. It was not until the light of the next morning that we were amazed to realize something profound had indeed occurred. At some point during that night, our entire mining facility and a large circle of the land around it seemed to have been scooped up and carried off to a completely different place, all without anyone knowing about it. The entire landscape outside of our circle of desert could only be described as alien. Large floating rocks could be seen in the distance. No one had even seen anything like it anywhere on Earth. We fully explored our new surroundings, hoping to find a way home. No way home was even found. Ever found. In fact, we soon discovered that we take for what we take for granted now. Not only could we not get back home, we also could not access the landscape outside the desert. Curiously, we discovered that a flow of water was provided from a high point of rock, and we discovered a small tree growing in the very center of the circle. Our central tree 
uh, that is so important to our lives here was just a mere sapling back then. Species description Mofang. Through ambassadors, ambassador seeds, the Mofang were the first known human species humans were introduced to. And Liang was the first to call the alien a Mofang. Impressed with their advanced ability to imitate our sounds, movements, and mannerism. Although they have a name for themselves, their language is mostly unpronounceable by humans. As a result, and because of their mimicry abilities, communication with the Mofang is primarily accomplished by their learning human languages rather than humans learning to speak Mofang. They have been able to learn almost every human language represented in Hunrath enough to provide functional if rudimentary communication. The Mofang basic external morphology is remarkably humanoid. Bilateral symmetrical tetrapods, bipedal head with anterior facial features, mouth, eyes, nostrils. Other external features include minimal body hair and raised dorsal protrusions. Constitution is somewhat frail, due apparently to their thin and lightweight internal structure, but internal investigation has not been possible. They have ample cranial space to account for a substantial brain, and their intelligence is impressive as evidenced by their advanced technology. That's them. Arai. After a certain level of maturity and health of the tree, a passage opened at its base. This passage allowed contact with two additional species. The first contact was with the Arai. The first contact revealed the Arai to be large, beetle-like insects. We were unable to communicate directly with, the, with them in any way, but they appeared to have some rudimentary level of intelligence. It was Luri Ring Tooth who first made the journey through the heart to Kaptar and named both the New World and the inhabitants. The Arai have three distinct variants that have come to be referred to as Barnacle, Beetle and Polyarch. Although their morphology is dramatically different from human, their internal systems, like all of our neighbors, are supported by similar atmospheric composition and basic nutrients. In their barnacle stage, the Arai are completely immobile. The Arai stay in this egg-like development state seemingly indefinitely. In order to hatch, they must be in proximity of polyarch and fertilized by the beetles after a certain stage of maturity. The beetles are the eyes and ears, hands and feet, with only a minimal nervous system of their own. They are essentially the sensory extensions of the immobile polyarchs. They are able to execute simple commands, but apparently have very little in the way of indiv individual sentience. That's them. Oh, we saw those. Yeah. The Arai polyarchs are the intelligence and the consciousness of the species. Although it was obvious that there was intelligence behind the species, it wasn't until Caroline Farley began spending large amounts of time in close proximity that deeper communication began. With a room nearby, Farley was the first to communicate non-verbally and learn much about the species, including some historical information. The Arai species survived in their world while several other sentient species came and went. Among them, an ancient species who formed a deeper relationship with the Arai, carving temples and dwelling for them in the rocks. And later, a more recent species that took over much of their homeworld. This latter species was especially adept, adept at mechanical construction, using it mostly to capture and process large flying creatures using the beetles as bait. Oh, oh. Villain. The final species to be discovered were the Villain. The Villain had been communicating with the Arai for many years through ambassador seeds, but became part of the larger community very shortly after the Arai. With a large and imposing frame and a form of communication based on a complex, multi-voiced, low-frequency rumble, the initial introductions were intimidating. After several attempts, a male Vidal was able to begin some rudimentary communication and began visiting the villain in Marais, which she named on a regular basis. She discovered a complex and amazing society that was able to use their technology in unexpected ways. They had the ability to quickly transform their world using extruded structures based on some form of complex miniature substrate material. Unlike the other worlds, the villain sphere 
is scooped out of a villain resettlement group that was preparing to set off into space to find a new homeworld. This was their way of life, to put themselves into stasis and scatter themselves through the stars. As mentioned previously, their appearance is imposing, standing about 9 feet tall. With a distinct reptilian resemblance, they have 6 limbs, 2 muscular legs and arms, and a smaller set of arms. They control every aspect of their technology with their vocalizations, but over the years they have created control panels based on their number system that allows the other species to easier access elements of their technology. Giants, they are giants. Communication, talking with our neighbors. We take communication for granted, even with the varied languages we find here in Honrath. But when we suddenly find ourselves among other intelligent species who don't share our culture, history, DNA, or vocal cords, it requires a huge amount of effort for the beginning of rudimentary chatting. This quick overview will set the stage for what to expect when communicating with our neighbors. Mofang. The Mofang were the first non-humans we met, with at least some level of similar physical vocal generating abilities. They picked up the human words quickly. This early mimicry resulted in what we species, in what the species became to be called. Even though they were able to mimic single words and simple phrases, it became evident over the years that huge grammatical differences were not easily overcome. Some have proposed that the difficulty may have arisen because the Mofang insisted on attempting to learn every human language and as a result were never able to lock onto any consistent grammatical structure. Nevertheless, in spite of the rudimentary sentence construction, it has been very easy to communicate and it has been unnecessary for us to learn their language beyond a few simple phrases and proper names. If you would like to learn more about communication with the Mofang, please contact Tam. Villain. The Villain have presented a particular communication challenge. From what we can gather, they produce sounds using two large reed-like structures inside opposite sides of their heads. The vibrations generated are channeled to, resonate to resonance chambers in their skulls, where they are combined into a complex low-frequency dual tone. The low-frequency bitonal sounds are not only hard for humans to hear and resolve, but impossible for us to mimic, and the villain's hearing is also oriented toward low frequency, so they are unable to hear most of the sounds associated with human speech. Therefore, communication with the villain has relied on technology. They have adopted consoles, which the villain fluently control vocalization, for use by other species. Over the years, some individuals of other species, including a few humans, have learned to communicate very effic effectively using this method. Humans have been able to pick out some higher frequency characteristics of certain key villain words over the years, and although we can speak to them in a way that the villains can understand, we are occasionally able to hear and recognize these words when spoken distinctly by the villain. If you'd like to learn more about communication with the villain, please contact Vito. Arai. None of the stages of the Arai morphology have any vocalization apparatus. Because of the obvious synchronization of the barnacles, barnacle flash and the ability of the pawns to provide for and address the needs of the polyarchs, it was assumed that the species could communicate effectively. It was not until Farley began to spend a large amount of time in the polyarch antechamber that the first clues to this communication became evident. After months of research, Farley began to have limited success with receiving some kind of simple messages that were coming from the polyarchs. It is apparent now that the polyarchs had been attempting to communicate the entire time, but they themselves had been experimenting with various channels until they finally got a response from Farley. After this breakthrough, Others were able to tune in to the polyarchs and learn to listen. Both the polyarchs and the pawns have a simple organ that can sense human vocal frequency, enabling them to sense simple responses from humans. But over the years, Farley was able to learn to speak to the polyarchs via a related form of extrasensory transmission. If you'd like to learn more about communication with the RI, please contact Farley. Seed information. 
Ambassador Seeds were first documented about uh, 150 Earth, e Earth years ago. They occurred they occur about once every 400 days, if the trees remain healthy. Natural seed swaps occur between pairs of seeds that that we know we now know dropped simultaneously from healthy trees in paired sphere. When each seed was touched by species in sphere, the swap occurred, sending an ambassador from each sphere to the, to the paired sphere. Location of the swap is defin defined by the location of the pairs of seeds. After the first swap of seeds recharged quickly, allowing for a quick return. First meetings were intense but naturally short. It was quite a surprise for both the Mufang and us. Over time, the seeds required more time to recharge, producing longer visits between species. Collector seeds. Everyone who arrives is familiar with the collector seeds. The bright light that we were all drawn to right before the event that brought us here is a collector seed. What new arrives may not be aware of is that these seeds, like all seeds, come in pairs. When the tree drops a collector seed on the ground, it signals that its twin has begun its quest for a new being. That search may take hours or it may take years. When an appropriate situation, a natural threat or of death, is found, the seed activates and swaps a smaller, but varying size, sphere from Earth or whatever appropriate homeworld here to Honoraf. As Honoraf become more populated, we would watch for a newly dropped collector seed, collect it and place it in the entry canyon area. This allowed us to provide a more predictable entry experience for new arrives and provide a single area to collect any resources that may have come along with the new arriver. Unlike ambassador seeds and mother seeds, collector seeds do not seem to survive. The inner core is spent, leaving only the lifeless outer husk. Mother seeds, postulated but uh, unverified, first suggested by Alima Hamsa, 2232 Bert, BH, BH. The notion of mother seeds extrapolates the behavior of the lesser seeds to a uh, super, super seed. She posited that the process that actually created the paired spheres was similar to all other swaps, but on a much grander scale. The idea that two, is that two seeds from a mother tree were scattered on the galactic winds to find appro appropriately similar environments. When matches were found, some process was triggered that swapped large portions of landscape between vastly different worlds. Alma further noted that the trees' locations in the center of the sphere suggested that the trees grew from these mother seeds. Because of the similarities, it has been con conjectured that reswapping the entire environmental spheres might be possible with a larger scale version of the ambassador seed machine. Okay, that's all. Oh, that was a lot. And yet, why won't you let me get out of here? Wait. Never mind. Never mind. Welcome to uh, Hundra. Please give us a bit of information about you so we can get to know you a little better. Name. Date you came from. Please use four digit year. Uh, where you came from, country and city, circumstances under which you were taken, please not any dangerous dangers you noticed. Empty then field. Okay. Uh, Some will carry in January 2017. Madagascar. I had just arrived and was driving my supply truck along the coast south of Ma Manakara when I recall being washed away and the seed appeared. Uh, Uziel Regenbogen, 1942, Germany. Maria Gallego, uh, 1980, Cozumel, Me Mexico. Uh, Giant Quinio, March of two 2042, Portland. Skiing. Okay. And what time are we from? Oh. 
maybe we need to rewind it should mm, click when it's done well I, I feel like I should I should say something we we haven't heard from Shavar so We assume that um, Shavar, well, that the, the attack is inevitable. It's we we just don't know when. So um, Shavar and her family um, and others she trusts, I guess. Well, they'll they'll arrive, but they can't um, when they can. Without um, giving, you know, like uh, covertly. will stay here and uh, I'll go to Murray uh, at the last possible moment um, most are gone there's just a few uh, left here now the mayor got out early <laughs> um, I don't even know why I'm recording this it's uh, it's like somehow we'll live on or something. Um, I guess this has meaning if someone listens, but <laughs> who? A new one? <laughs> A new arriver. Oh, God, the kiosk out front. Uh, I need to update that message. So it seems that she updated the message that we heard in front of the house. And before we get into that, I'm gonna end this part here. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!